everybody. Welcome to this episode from Saving Family Memories. And today I'm joined with the lovely Rhonda Lauritsen from the USA, who is a author, biographer, family story expert, and the founder of Everlog Life. Lovely to have you here. I'm um, really excited to have you here, actually. You've, you've done so much work in the family history space, and I'm quite in awe of, of your history of, of work and what you've been doing over the many years that you've been involved with family history. So it's great to have you here today. And the first question I would ask you is, how did you get started on your family history journey? It was completely out of the blue. Uh, I wasn't doing family history or writing at all. It was kind of odd. It was the, the fall of 2007. I had this sort of just weird kind of nudge out of nowhere that I should start writing. And I wasn't a professional writer at all. I had a different job, but I thought maybe there's something there. And so I, I just thought, all right, I'll sit down and start, right? So, but I didn't start on that date. Like it was kind of nudging. I, I, it's the only way I can describe it. It's just the sense. And so I actually scheduled a date on my calendar. I'm like, all right, during the holidays, I'll have some free time. I'm going to sit down and I circled the date. I'm going to just see if there's anything there. I had no like aspirations of writing a book. I wasn't doing family history, but on the appointed date at the appointed time, I sat down, got out my notebook and just started scribbling. And the most remarkable thing happened. All this stuff started pouring out and it was all about my parents and growing up in a family business and their life and what they'd taught me. And it just, I guess that's how it works, right? It just starts pouring out. But in the middle of that session, I got a phone call and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to answer it. I'm writing. And it rang again a couple minutes later and uh, I better answer that. And I did. And it was my sister-in-law and she said, Rhonda, it's your dad. And my dad, whom I'd just been writing about, had passed away in that moment. Oh. And of course, I didn't think about writing for a little while. I mean, we had no. grieving to do and all of that. But a few days later, I was with my mom and I was thinking, my parents were married for 55 years. What, what's my mother going to do now without my dad? And I realized, we're going to write their story. And so she and I processed our grief and we set on this journey to write their story. And I thought it would be a little, you know, fun family history and it would take me a couple of months and it just changed the whole course of my life. Like literally changed the whole course of my life. <laughs> yeah, some similar story to mine. It was my father's passing in 2018 that got me started doing exactly that. So yeah, it's interesting what starts things off, isn't it? You really it realize is. the power of the stories that they sh they could have shared. And yeah, for me, I wish I'd shared Dad's story when I could. Um, but yeah, great that you captured some of yours. That's amazing. Um, so what, what is something that, that you discovered about your own family history in your work, uh, in your own family history that's perhaps taken you by surprise? Anything that's cropped up? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll give I'll give two diff very different examples, and one thing that cropped up, and and it's just this is more of a general observation, and that was I didn't really understand the power of story mm -hmm. to inspire others. When we finished my parents' story, we published it, and I mean I, I was I just didn't know what to expect. But when I got a call from my nephew, actually it wasn't a call. Nephews don't call you, they text you. <laughs> he texted me. And this was, I mean, he's a, you know, it's kind of a tough kid and not necessarily sentimental. And he texted me and he said, I read the book and it made me proud to be part of this family. Aww. And that was worth more than anything, you know, and, and when I realized the power of story to, for the next generation to help them understand who they are and what they're meant, who they're meant to become, um, that I just, I didn't see that coming. Um, I, I gather from the tone of your question that maybe you're interested, did I ever find a really interesting tidbit or something about my own family history? And I did. I found something really interesting recently. You want to hear it? I'll be brief. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> 
Um, I a niece of mine gave me a, a sort of clue, and I I'd never followed my matrilineal line back, mother to mother to mother, all the way back on the tree until I could run out of mothers on the on the tree, and the my that line goes back um, to 1630, and the second mother in the United States was hanged as a witch at Salem. So that's a that was a very interesting, tragic. Um, I, I'm saying it with like because it's so fascinating, but heartbreaking yeah. and um, but to a moment in history and a place where I had been and walked in those spaces and my brother and I had gone there and really felt a profound sense of place and we had no idea we had ancestors from there no idea that our line originated in that area so yeah the the journey Mm -hmm. never ends in discovering our own families after all these years i had no idea that's amazing thank you for sharing that story that's incredible yeah there was there was um, some some of my family back in um europe actually it was um there was there was some not she wasn't burnt at the stake but she was flogged or something for her beliefs and yeah just some terrible stuff went on back in back in the day just yeah I think the Lord we're not in that place anymore <laughs> it made me wonder though you know if there was what kind of trauma may have been passed down she, well, because yeah. she was a grandmother at the time mm. and her daughter was my direct mother and her yeah. daughter was my direct mother so there was a baby so grandma was burned at the stake when the granddaughter was six months Ooh. old can you imagine being a mother no. I mean I didn't no, we can't we can't imagine but it just no. anyway why was the story never told you know mm. just maybe no one ever wanted to talk about it no no and that's interesting I do find that with some family stories that I help with that they there are things that people don't want to talk about um, and that's okay, you know, for for passing on to future generations if, if there's things they don't want to share. Um, I don't push that with them. But um, but as you say, it can be interesting to to know the history and then look at how it, it had affected the, the generations that followed immediately after, mm. for sure. Thank you for that. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the there about the benefits of recording family history like your your nephew said that he it really helped him is there anything else that you would add to that and why it matters so much that we record our family history yes i'm glad you used the word record because i'm passionate about oral history and yeah. one of the things that i hear a lot is people are oh i should write a book or i should be writing or and they have this sense that doing their family story should be something huge like my mother and I undertook and I guess I just want to say you don't have to do that in fact it's hard to even get your family to read a book anyway but voice I would tell everyone to start with oral history start with recording voices today because it's easy and it's enjoyable and the bond that's formed between the person telling the story and the hearer can be really powerful and in the end voices are amazing when you hear someone's voice after they're gone it's like they're right back in the room again and you can only capture that today exactly we were lucky enough to get some audio recordings of my dad actually so i i have the next task in my family history is is to to put that together with some photographs and create a a video out of it for the family oh that's lovely i think i do agree i think voice and and visual you know in my case i do video but um any any person that's uncertain about being on video or really doesn't want to be on video i say to them please just do an audio recording because at least then you you're hearing some of the the sort of essence of the person as well as the knowledge that they held and the facts that they're going to share. It's not just about that, it's about getting to know the person and the voice is certainly one of the best ways to do that, I agree. Yes, and voice, tone quality, accent, yes, it, yes. colloquialisms, um, all of that is just wonderful. <laughs> exactly. So um, you set up this lovely business called Everlog Life, which has, how long has it been going now? I'm not sure. Tell me a little bit about that, what you offer and when it started and so on. 
We started uh, in 2016 uh, and really full-time in 2017. Uh, my journey started in 2012, I guess, when I published my parents' book, but I had a full-time J job until then. So, yeah, we started then. I work with Rachel Trotter here in Ogden, Utah, and we started out doing this work professionally where we were doing biographies and memoirs and helping people and local history projects. So we've done some just fun stories of buildings and places and and then we started doing oral history for clients and have just been really busy and fortunate that we've been able to do this work full time. If somebody was thinking about writing their story or recording their story, preferably, what would be the f sort of best piece of advice you would offer on where to start with doing that? Really, it goes back to what I said a minute ago, and that was I would start with, we tell everybody, start with oral history because it's easy and it's enjoyable and it's not overly complicated and you don't have to make it a giant project. And then there are so many things you can do with it. You can take the audio like you were discussing and make a video with it by adding images or some motion B-roll, uh, whether it's from your own family or from sort of historic archives. You can write stories out of it. You can give people the transcripts. You can there's just so much that you can do once you have the stories and so that's that's where I would tell people to start and of course I guess the other thing I didn't mention about our business is that we teach classes we love to teach because there came a moment when we got so busy doing work ourselves we realized okay our capacity is limited and there are so many more stories that needed to be told so we wanted to start empowering others to do the work for their own families and if you know not everyone can can hire us so yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> and I think I think there are some people that that prefer perhaps to do it themselves, and that's absolutely fine. I I teach um, some tips and ideas of how to do that on my YouTube channel, um, but yeah, it's it's something that's I think when 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 you're able to do something yourself, it doesn't have that same pressure. So they, the time pressure isn't quite so much if if they do it themselves. Um, so yeah, I, I encourage them to both do it themselves and work with with me if if that works for them as well. The thing is, at Absolutely. the moment we you know we have we have this generation of seventy, eighty, ninety year old people that don't have that digital footprint that our children have. So you know, with with our children, that everything's going to be recorded because they do everything on their phones. Um, but our grandparents or even our parents um, don't have that. So there's, there's a little bit of a, um, a short time frame really left, I feel. Um, and I, I'm so passionate about saving stories that I, you know, I'm, I'm reaching out to everywhere I can to sort of let people know you need to do this now uh, before, it's, before it's too late. So, uh, yeah. And we're, none we're, of getting, us know. we're getting the message out there, aren't we, Rhonda? <laughs> we are. Go team, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, if people want to contact you and engage with Everlog Life, how can they do that? Uh, you can go to our website, and we have so many free resources and materials. We'd love to have you just check out what we have there. And I also uh, gave you a link that they can get a free oral history toolkit on our site. So it has some checklists and equipment and questions to ask and just basically everything that you'll need to know to get started. And then once you get that checklist, you'll have all of my contact information. And you'll be on my I, – I send out a once-a-week email, too, so you can stay in touch that way. That's great. Well, thank you very much for your time today. And um, I'm just, yeah, as I said, so in awe of the work that you've done. So, uh, yeah, I love watching your videos. And um, I must actually get your book. I haven't got your book yet, so I must order that. And oh. thank you very much for joining me. Likewise. It's been a, been a real delight. Thank you. Thanks, Rhonda. Bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>